Okay, my name is Irene Epp, and along with Rickan Bach, we are the two partner leaders of New Mexico Listens in Santa Fe County. New Mexico Listens is actually a statewide project, which includes both the southern and the northern parts of the state. And we operate under the auspices of the New Mexico Humanities Council. I'm very proud to say that our project director, Bethany Tabor, is in the audience, so she can check up upon us. And I am also very, very proud and very pleased to say that we're honored today to have the original director of Save the Bees, along with the original tech lighting sound backup. So we have Duchess Dale, the director, and Joshua Billiter, who are the people who first took this show to Teatro Paragua in January, and then have been on the road with it for some time. You are lucky to be here today because Save the Bees has a big future, in my opinion. It is not only laugh out loud funny, but it has a very important and it's kind of a medical emergency need that we need the message that you're about to hear today. Please stay after the actual performance, which is another big deal. We're at the Santa Fe Preparatory School, which has generously donated a theater for us to use, and the theater director, Brad Fairbanks, has been generous and extremely helpful in putting this on. Go ahead, prep, clap for yourselves. And I am a big fan of Santa Fe Prep. I worked here for 17 years, from 1976 to 1993. And it is enormously happy for me to be back here in this space doing this today. So it's a special day for all of us. I was almost going to forget I'm supposed to say on the, on the more mundane level, we do have restrooms. You can go out the exit and then go to your right, and you'll find those. And above all, please do stay. We're having a talk back afterward. So after the performance, there'll be a talk back. There'll be a chance for you to see the student actors. And I believe, Duchess, are you going to say something? The next person now, now later, Duchess will be running the talk back. And I guess without further ado, I'm going to say, welcome to Save the Bees. You're in for a very special experience. Thank you. Luke, a young man in his late 20s, and Chapman, a man in his early 50s, enter, talking together in an empty legislative chamber. Anyway, it all seems to come down to the ladybugs, and that word I can't pronounce. neo neo nicotinoid. Yeah, right. Your side wanted to ban the very pesticide that works, that kills the bad bugs and leaves the good bugs alone, all in the name of saving the bees. And the ladybugs, how will they save us? Their magic? Oh, well, if you were a farmer, then you'd know. But I'm not a farmer. I want to learn. I truly want to know the ways of the farm. Ladybugs are brilliant with their little red shells, the black spots like what you would find in space. They mass as an army of good intent, easily ridiculed, perhaps, by the name Ladybugs. But man, oh man, when they go to work, they devour the enemy, the bad insects that your tribe wants to purge. It's not, that, it's not like we don't want to save the bees. We just want to stay in business. This bill as it came to the floor would imperil all kind of I get it. So when I voted against saving the bees, as if I'm not a friend of the bees, as if I hate them, surely you understand the ramification. My constituents are different than yours. Clearly. Primary territory. Yep. So what can we agree upon, apart from our sincerest desires to save the bees? Not much. What are the stakes? Life or death? Everything. Really? Really. So can we go back and consider where all this came from? Like, what led us up to now? If you want to, if you're so inclined. I don't see the money in it, though. If it's life or death, surely it matters to try. Your side stopped trying years ago. 
How would you know? You're a freaking kid. You should visit my town. Then you might understand. My world, that is. What you people like to dismiss as red country folk. Really? You people? It's all in your terms, as if you're smarter than we are. Not true. True. Let me present something different then. Go right ahead. We see slides of a younger Chapman marching in his little league uniform and a small town July 4th parade. Dude, it's like this. We grew up together. We're on the same team. A slide on the screen of a young boy in his little league uniform. I'm 10 years old up there. Toad behind me played second base. His dad was a janitor at the local college. Orville behind him. We're talking silos at uh, the corn in the Iowa August. His brother was cross-eyed, sadly. That's too bad. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe some kind of operation. I remember some kind of fundraiser. And what's your deal? What do you mean? Your social status. What do you think? Well, because I know you, I'm wagering you're a rich kid, a leading family in town. Touche. And by the way, everyone on that screen is white. Touche again. Not that I'm supposed to care. My people, that is. We're happy in our whiteness. Fearful of the other. I don't think that. I read the freaking New York Times. I know. How about some more old photos then? Okay, then here goes. We see new photo slides reflecting a setting of a town graveyard shaded by maple trees and Chapman as a teenager dressed in a coat and tie nervously ascending to a podium, festooned in red, white, and blue. Memorial Day, homie. And is that you? Yes. You have hair. I still have hair. Not like that. Who took the photos? Guess. Your mom? Affirmative. So this is me doing my 16-year-old version of the Gettysburg Address. Believe me, I was nervous. You don't look it. I guess. But of course, with that speech, it's, it really speaks for itself. You know, hallowed ground. Four score. Lincoln was a Republican, you know? Please. Uh, I'm just saying. I won't even go there. My point is, though, see how my small town came together? Fourth of July, Memorial Day. See the crowd? I know all of these families by name. The cemetery where everyone buried is... A, it's like the names on the tombstone or a homeroom call. And those maple trees. Was that your first political speech? Maybe. You can't go wrong with that material. Okay, I've got one for you. Then it's your turn. We'll both forget our high school glory days, right? Our athletic triumphs. We would have smoked you. No way. But check out this slide. Now we see a group of teenage boys and girls at a party with six packs and a bong being passed around sharing weed out in some country field. All right, now we're talking. Party time. The weed wasn't as strong back then, but the bong hits made up for it. I always suspected you were a stoner. How about you? No stranger to the green, but I didn't let it interfere with my jump shot. Which is still impressive, I have to admit, but my high school would have taken you. No sweat. So my point is here, do we have all these things in common? Why all of a sudden do you want to secede from New Mexico? That bill you sponsored? You actually introduced that bill. I did. I, um, great moments in legislative history. I got my point across. Turn your back on our shared republic. You're talking about the past. It's a different time now. Time less. Like a wayward youth, for example. That only goes so far. But your side would do away with most of the things that we glowingly describe which is not true. If you say so, but you city folk are like a distant potentate decreeing how we should live. How can you deny that with these stupid laws that we pass that you vote on? Okay, I have this idea. How about we switch votes and see what happens? I vote for your stuff and you vote for mine. Ha! Seriously, you have no idea what it's been like for me to go along with all of your side. I hate conflict. You're in the wrong world then. I know, I have my reasons. So, I can vote for this B bill that would put me out of business, my farm and all of that. Yes, it's just an exercise. And I can vote to protect your firearms. In this atmosphere, are you kidding me? On the heels of this latest one? On top of all the others, the endless stream of carnage? These events, they are terrible. I have kids. So now you have a reason to switch your vote. 
I thought you were the focus here. If we don't do something, then it's the same old script. You're willing to sacrifice your career like that? For a higher good, if it means some like degree of cooperation. Okay. Seriously, in different times, on different occasions, you have no idea what it's been like for me to hear about the traditions of your world. Those gun exchanges out in the frontier where you live, how they're just a polite excuse to visit your neighbor, especially with the ranches or farms or whatever in the distance involved. You all know each other, not like a background check. In those instances means anything. I wanted to vote for your side. But you didn't. No, I didn't. OK, how about me then? People should not needlessly suffer. They should have a choice to end their own life. I pressed you on that one. Wouldn't you seem to fit the libertarian vibe? I know. But you didn't vote with me. Same equation on my end. And you can't say you're a pro-life. <laughs> Hold on there, pal. Watch your assumptions. Why wouldn't I be? I know it's a complicated issue for some. For many. I remember when this wasn't even a part of the political dialogue. I'm older than you. Much older. Hold on there. I can still take you on the dribble. In your imagination. But seriously, why has this become a defining issue of our time? Because it's important. Your side was cagey. It's not so simple. Apparently not. So anyways, let's get to it. Let's do this. I vote yes. I vote no. I vote no. I vote yes. We're both goners now. Maybe that wasn't such a great idea. It's been real. No doubt. Politics isn't all of that anyway. Agreed. I've got a young family. It takes its toll. I've only got my botched aspirations and some notion of a better world. Dude, you're weird. I always thought as much. And I always knew you were a show-off. Honor your trophies, dude. What? Pretend to be stupid and you dishonor your upbringing. I'm not stupid because I disagree with you. See what I mean? It's the arrogance that really angers me and my constituents. And my constituents cannot see much beyond their own organic coffee dom. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, what are we going to do about it? Okay, let's go back to my life then, in the meantime. On the screen, we see slides of Luke on the family tractor as a young child and wearing a cowboy hat. Dad used to let me plow the soybean field. I was really young and heaven was real. You look happy. I'm six years old. Oh. Those are the territory, but you wouldn't exactly know that. My oldest is seven. Do you do the same with your kids? Yes, only we don't grow soybeans anymore. Corn, even if the water is iffy. My little girls love the tractor. How heteronormative. How honest. I'm teasing, you know. I know. Can we go back to our crazy votes for a second? I mean, the surprising ones? Sure. I didn't like how those two votes made me feel. But seriously, what was it like for you to vote against your own people? Not good, especially because I know I'm toast now as a result. I mean, inside. Totally weird. I grew up with guns. To go against my people? At least in doing so, we prove we're not trained monkeys. Great. Before this, I'm trying to remember when you ever stuck your neck out. I have. I'm drawing a blank. I've sat behind you for a number of years. Look, on my side, you can never be too extreme. Voters judge your tone, your ferocity, the look in your eye. My side isn't blameless on that front. So why are we here? Exactly the question I'm asking. OK, let's get back to the slides, shall we? Cool. Now the projector displays slides on the screen of Luke as a third grader in front of his class reciting a memorized poem, something that he wrote. I won the poetry trophy. Best original poem by a third grader. I knew it. Do you remember it? No. Did the other kids make fun of you? No. We rural folk respect each other. Filters down to the very young. It's not our way. Bullying is more of a city thing. Are you sure about that? That's not my impression. I'm just saying that's been my experience and my family's. We go way back, by the way. I believe it. OK, one more splice for my fabulous life. OK. On the screen, Luke at his high school graduation, cap and gown, receiving an award. 
Valedictorian, homie. But no college? Time to get to work, raise a family, take over the farm. So different from my life. Not everyone goes to Ivy League, buddy. Of course, I know that. So you really married your high school sweetheart? Made sense at the time, still does. As I said, so different from my life. I wish I could wind it back, avoid all the complexity and the questions. Maybe you just had too many choices. I'm blessed, my children, my wife. And I, like Rilke said, solitary in that mountain range of my own feelings. Those unforgiving rocks, boulders. I'm sure you've had relationships, good ones. Very true. And all of our choices have a flip side, the other path, what could have been? Oprah says that's a waste of time thinking about the other side, the other life that could have been. It's not like I don't think about what college would have been like. Maybe I should have just stayed at home like you did. High school, I had a high school sweetheart too, you know. I could have gone into business with my dad, forgot this adventure into rebellion that became my adult life. I think Oprah has a point. <laughs> I always did well in school. You're a freaking poet. The way you talked about those ladybugs during our debate. I thought you were gonna get all misty-eyed. I leave that to you. But you won your poetry contest third grade. Exactly, third grade. Still. But seriously, I do have my quiet moments, just me reflecting back. It was an easy choice on my end. If you were in my family, you'd understand. For sure. But why should our different uh, opinions translate into some kind of, I get tired of the word divide, some kind of standoff. You know, backs to each other, past, talking past each other, when we even choose to turn around. You and I don't do that. So what? We never vote the same way. That's just the way it is. Except for that stupid bee bill. You convinced me. What do us urban folks know about farm pesticides? I actually did vote on you with that one. I'm sorry you had to take the hit. It did not go unnoticed. No kidding. You should have seen my inbox the day after. I meant on our side. We noticed. We talked about it. So what? You hardly reciprocated. Look, I don't have all the answers to this. You went to college. Oh, come on. Okay, forget that. We're simply up against larger forces. But we're the voice of those larger forces in our own modest way. So what's a person to do? We're not people, we're politicians. You Gosh. hate us, right? It doesn't come from nowhere, guy. Still, that's hard to work with. And your side, with all your superiority, how are we supposed to work with that? I don't think you're being fair. You call us stupid, misguided, which is even worse. I know you, Senator, and you hate to be patronized. Definitely. So, would you not react in a certain way, like we do? Possibly. All right, then. We can't actually talk to each other if we resent our very being, can we? But it's all on your terms. Hardly a level playing field. I don't feel like we're in charge. Like, I refer you to the previous administration. It's your fault, that guy. If you were not so superior, so patronizing, he would not have happened. So is it like a revenge thing? Is that what you want? This is what we have. I think we could do better on both sides. Maybe. Chapman addresses his campaign rally. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you want an explanation as to how I could cast my votes like that, violating your trust. Okay, let's start with the first one, the guns. Are we capable of respecting other ways of life, other traditions? How do we know about rural existence or gun shows? Have any of us ever actually been to one? We're supposed to speak with authority about what it's like to exchange firearms on a random Sunday afternoon which is what a gun show often is. So what are we, to require background checks in that instance? Life is complex. Should we not allow for acknowledging profound differences in how we approach the challenge of living? Should we not pick our battles? Look, I know all these shootings. Excuse me, assault rifles? The insanity of it all. But can we not move slightly in their direction? Respect what one law, for example, will do to an outgoing rural tradition? Oh. Well, I tried. It's an impossible situation. That's what I keep trying to tell you. I know, so impossible. Let me just think happy thoughts here instead. We used to have the best slumber parties. My mom would make these blueberry pancakes for all my friends. 
inevitably before some practice. My house was the jam, plenty of bacon, seconds to go around. You were wealthy. So what? My teammates' parents weren't, at least not, it was a mixed bag. Farmers, janitors, college professors. All white. You already said that. You sound like my side now. When in Rome. You're missing the point. We were a community, differing views in my small town for sure, but not this ill will towards each other. Only three channels back then, right? Oh yeah, and don't get me started on your channel. Real news, not the liberal media. Your turn now. Luke addresses his campaign rally. Ahem. So, I'm sure some of you are wondering why I voted with the other side on this gun business. Okay, so, first of all, it's not like I lost my mind all of a sudden. I'm from here, and you should know my thoughts by now. I try to reflect them up there in that fancy state capital, which is not easy. Outnumbered we are, at least in this state. But sometimes the other side has a point. They do, at least in this case. When do we say enough already? These tragedies that we read about every other week. Why on earth do we need these AR-15s? We're hunters, most of us. How is this our agenda? I know what you're thinking. This opens the door. The other side will take advantage. The next thing you know, but that does not have to be the case because you have representatives like me up there making sure that they don't take advantage. At some point, are we not all in this together? Our side and their side? You did good. Will you visit me at the ranch in my post-senator status? Of course I will. I can only imagine the mail coming my way, the primary challengers lining up as we speak. You can spend more time with your family. Oh yeah, that. We're just volunteers anyway, right? It's not a real vocation as measured by monetary compensation, unlike other states. No kidding, I take a hit that way with my business. The months I spend with you jokers. I and mean, we do get a per diem. It's not like we're selfless volunteers. Sure, that. And we have our special red license plates and the differential treatment that comes our way. Can I get you anything, Senator? That's only from lobbyists. Right. And in return, we do as they say. And in return for this $500 contribution, I will now vote as you wish. You are now the master of my soul. Voters believe that, don't they? Yes, they do. That's so not the case. Politicians, lobbyists, we're cartoon characters at best. For whatever reason, we choose to do this, don't we? We are weird. But it's the right thing to do. Okay, back to our crazy votes. How about this next one? You game? Sure. My turn. This one's gonna be bad. No kidding. Chapman addresses his constituents. Okay, okay. I know that many of you are mystified by my vote last session on abortion. Okay, in this case, maybe I was temporarily insane. It was hard in that moment. It went against everything in my past. I just thought, enough already. They have the votes, I surrender. Maybe it's a gesture towards bipartisanship, towards working together for the greater good, to lower the temperature. All right, I won't do it again. How about that? If you reelect me, that is. Sometimes we just make bad votes. That was weak. It was the best I could do. Bad idea to just go out there. I didn't like how that one made me feel, for sure. Voting against my own life. Dissonance is just a word. That sensation was real. These are tough issues. Your turn. Luke speaks to his church community. I'm not sure where to begin on this one. Okay, I voted pro-choice. I did, I'm a man. What right do I have to dictate to women what they should and shouldn't do with their own health choices? You all must know that I am personally against abortion. Fervently so. It's not good what we're doing to the unborn. But they have the votes, the other side. By going with them on this, they will come over to our side for other things. Trust me, they will. It will help us in the long, in the long run. 
Not fun, eh? I've had better moments in my life. What you said made sense. Of course it did. To you. Do you think they understand the strategy? The long game? <laughs> no. Apparently. We're doomed, you and I. Okay. One more crazy switcheroo since we're going down this road. Toast we are. Voter fraud. Oh, no. These imposter voters dressing up in disguises. They're everywhere. There were irregularities. Indeed, those paper ballots backed up by layers of verification. Into those voting machines they go. And voila, fraud. Maybe we should just skip this one. No, I'll go first. Life is so uncertain. How can we know, like anything? Just because we think we do, trusting in technology and such? What's wrong with having to show a voter identification at the polling place? Not a passport, I'm not saying that, or even a notarized birth certificate. Just a simple driver's license, exactly matching how you are registered. What's wrong with that? Your turn. No quiero. Come on. Okay. Many of you are wondering how I could vote against requiring voter identification at the polling places. And after that, a mandatory audit of the final results. I often hear that you need a driver's license when renting out a movie. Oh, we don't do that anymore. Um, or when you go to the bank or when you board a plane. What's the harm? How is this egregious? But citizens on my side of the aisle, this is different. We all move around. Our addresses change. Who can remember what you put down when you registered however many years ago? And deep down, what are we afraid of? That people on both sides will actually vote? Don't we have any confidence in our messaging? We are the correct party, inheritors of the past. We use our brains. We do not succumb to politically correct messaging. Therefore, I say, let the polls be open a month ahead of time. You are who you say you are. Forget this silly notion of identification. We can win this way. I promise our message will prevail. Holy smokes. I had a, I had a, I had a nerve on that one. It made sense to me. Of course it did, because you believe that stuff. Well, at this point, we wait for the emails. Our constituents haven't been able to actually verbalize their specific thoughts. Well, those specific thoughts are, on, are coming our way, that's for sure. We both know this. It's so hard for me to respond. Bad idea, always. Which is why I don't. Same here. I'd like to say something like, but my district wants to be surprised. Don't you? Don't you get tired of having your own views reflected back to you? Let's make this interesting. They definitely don't want to hear that. Here they come, the incredulous electronic messages. We see a slide of the Microsoft Outlook icon. Dear Senator Murphy, I was stunned at your recent vote to allow rural firearm sales. I thought you were one of us, but clearly you are not. Shame on you. Here's Senator Murphy, as one who voted for you, I wish I could have that one back. How could you? I cannot believe that you went with the other party on that gun vote. Whoever runs against you next cycle, I don't care what party, they will get my vote. Dear Senator Murphy, as your constituent and your boss, you are hereby fired. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's just a one day story. I don't think so. Maybe they'll get distracted by some of their grievance. Not my side, they remember. Well, with mine, there's so many positions and nuances that one needs to be conscious of. It's hard to keep with, up with the correct way of thinking. It's, it's not so hard on my end. Oh, look, here comes some for you. Here's Senator Becker. Well, sure enough, you have become one of them. You politicians are dumb. My First Amendment writing papers enjoy your last term. Dear Senator Becker, your dad, who I knew personally, he was a fine man, by the way. He would be discouraged by the anti-gun foe. Whatever are you in time? Oh, let me guess. Never talk to me again. 
Tinha de santo da peca. Mas tinha de mim. É uma questão. Well, your folks get straight to the point, don't they? They feel strongly about these issues. So does my side. Yes, but my people are inclined towards a physical kind of reaction. Like, where's the crowbar? My people just get just as angry, but maybe they're more aware of where physical violence leads. Any ideas, Ivy guy? I don't know. Oh, something's coming to mind. Yes, it's getting clearer. That's it. That's what? A magic word that will bring a smile to your young but weathered face. A simple word evoking much. Such as? Redistricting. Is that session coming up? Darn right it is, and none too soon. I don't know. The maps, how can you forget the maps? We get to redraw. We draw our own districts because we are the deciders. We now see a slide of a generic but colored state map. The various colors indicate different legislative districts. We get our, out our pens and do our own magic drawing. That's kind of messed up. Yes, no denying. But we're, this is the reality we're faced with. As you say, we, you, and I are not responsible for the system. We did not dream it up. So I'm supposed to delete the bad, in this case, rabid precincts uh, in my district. In a general sense, yes. And substitute them for less rabid ones. Yes. But all my precincts are rabid, if we're going to keep using that word. So find new ones. You just have to live in one of them. But there's no surrounding precincts that are much different. Everyone in my region thinks the same way. No cities, no colleges, no software companies. Ha! Ah, what about you? You have the same problem, right? Just a different version. You have a point. Map slide fades. Okay, forget that idea. It's not going to work for either of us. What gets to me about all this is both our sides, is that we actually really like each other, at least up here. Chapman gestures towards a photo slide of the empty legislative chamber. Not always, and to varying degrees, of course. Yeah, and those varying degrees are important. But on balance, we're all weird enough to run for political office. Well, with all our different motivations, in of course. Of course. We want to do good for our state. We really do. There has to be some unifying or at least calming effect to that. A calm is not a word that I would use right now. But I'm talking about us. We're supposed to be leaders in all that, right? Our constituents are busy with their lives. They count on us to solve these larger problems. They don't have the time. Except for what they care about. And then they make sure to have the time. But it's up to us to come with solutions, right? Which requires, obviously, at least some degree of cooperation. My people do not like that word. Nor do mine, despite the fact that they say that they want us to work together. When I do, I hear about it. If I even hint of such a direction, I don't have to make a vote. My people are uncanny that way. They read tone scary good. We're up here for a reason, to bring back a better life for our people, as you say then we're supposed to be above it all in an elevated, transcendent kind of way. We have to be. Speak for yourself. I could use a number of cliches at this point that represents rural life. That dog won't hunt. Ain't no money in it. Tag it, bag it, sell it. What? I was just seeing if you are paying attention. Where are we going then? If we don't step up, as they say. We just play it out, dude. Ride until the end. See where it takes us. Dude, that is not a good direction. That's not the point. This is larger than us. You have kids. They'll be fine as long as we keep your side from ruining our lives. Not. At this point, we see new images of civil discord, people shouting at each other, police, armored presence, and civil unrest. It's no use. We need to play this out. And where will that lead? Again, you tell me. I mean, it's who we are, right, as people. But we're not people. I thought we established that. We're politicians. Precisely. I'm sure even you know about out there on the frontier in that place of infinite spaces. You do door to door, right, in your pickup truck, right? Yeah, that's how I won my primary. So you know how it is in those moments when you're truly connecting at the doors, the thrill of possibility, a better world, that we're all in this together. Our world would be better if you just left us alone. 
Seriously, both our sides have a vision of what a world could be. I know they're different. Very different. Obviously, but the point is dialogue. Take that away and... You know, it wasn't that long ago that we actually did come together in a bipartisan way in this here chamber with our sacred res respective parties. Do you remember the driver's license issue? You know, whether illegal aliens should be given official state-issued driver's licenses as if they're citizens? Do I remember? Are you kidding? My side suffered. I suffered. Illegal means illegal, right? So perfect for bumper stickers. So wrong on a humanitarian level. And they're not just aliens. They live on the planet Earth. You are either a citizen or you are not. Right. Foreign nationals taking away all those high-paying jobs in our high-tech sector, for example. There is legal immigration, and then there is illegal immigration. Hordes of illegals scaling our imaginary to be built walls, ruining our lives. Like those imposter voters I mentioned earlier. No end to the costumes that those imposters come up with. Going through their closets, fake mustaches, pirate hats. <sighs> that policy worked well for my side. Tell me about it. The ultimate wedge issue, as if dividing my own party. All emotion, hardly a policy. I lost many voters on that one, at a traffic light being scolded. I was personally not unsympathetic. I hire many of these foreign nationals. Is that the right term? Send them all back to Mexico. That's what your side wanted. But remember how the issue went away? We relented. Yes. Collaborated. It was a bill that I originally sponsored. A provisional license acknowledging their humanity. The fact that they are here, working, living, and driving in our communities. We gave up that wedge. We could have kept using it. And how many seats did you pick up in our legislature as a result? Still. Yes, I, for one, appreciate it. My side did. Uncle. We said uncle. What? A game before your time. Another way of saying, I surrender. We heard your plea. We did not have to. Many on my side wanted to keep hammering away with that wedge. I did get emotional when that bill came up on the floor. It must have been a lot to me. Coming together and all that. See? So at least we could move on to the next divisive issue. Maybe, but my point is that it wasn't that long ago. What, during both of our terms five years ago? That's about right. And it was real. I was there. You were there. Okay, but that doesn't change where we are right now. This is real. We are here. True. Five years is an eternity in politics, especially, especially after that guy. He would not have happened if it was not for your side. You created him. Okay, maybe. But consider where we are right now. I'm just saying. When did you become such an optimist, an idealist? I thought that was my role. I've had to listen to you for years now. Inevitably, some of it rubs off. Once again, getting back to the present, before we go down this road of doom and no dialogue, of hating each other and playing it out, like you said, let's just do a lightning round like we do in committee sometimes. One word, then the other responds. Are you following? I think so. Fox News. That's two words. Oh, okay, we can use two root words, if warranted. Fox News. Unbiased. Your turn. Critical race theory. Valuable. Voter fraud. Imaginary. Portion. A woman's choice. Taxes. Higher. Save the bees. You are stupid. <laughs> you and that bill. As transcendent leaders, it is our duty to point out legislative flaws. You did a good job on that front. I should have known the consequences of going along with you. But it's certainly down on the list of importance, isn't it? I mean, issue-wise. Everything is important on my side. Can't they cut you some slack? As you know, firsthand as well, you, I, are in trouble. Goners. In the ditch we go. I think I just won't run. You? I need to talk to my campaign manager. Look at the numbers. Oh, I hate that phrase. Nothing to be done. All slides fade to black. You got it, guy. It shouldn't go like this, don't you agree? I mean, beyond our own botched careers. I don't know. You have a more elevated expectation than I do. I was taught growing up to just go with the hand I was dealt. I look into the future, and I don't like what I see. It's, it's blank. A darkness. We're so freaking divided.
Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. If we can get the chairs up here. Oh, I want to thank you for being here today. As Irene may have mentioned, or you didn't know where she was pointing. My name is Duchess Dale, and I have the privilege of directing these young, wonderful students in this wonderful play. And the idea of this play is to create dialogue and to bring it forth, and the ability to do so with these young actors. And again, thank you, Brad Fairbanks and Santa Fe Prep, and what Irene and Rakan has have made possible with the Humanities Council is this being filmed so that we can create a package, if you will, that's going to go to high schools, to students, to use entertainment and theater as a way for education. So this is an extraordinary time to do that. And right now what I'm gonna do is introduce the actors as I also bring up Senator Bill O'Neill, who is the playwright and somewhat reminiscent of one of these characters. So Senator Bill, if you can come up while we're Um, regrettably, Senator Pirtle from Roswell couldn't be here today. Usually he is, but he is my trade a farmer and a representative from Roswell and was unable to be here. But what I'd love to do is I'm going to hand the microphone, starting with our lovely narrator, let them introduce themselves to you. And then um, I'll tell you a little bit about that before we have questions from you. This is our opportunity to do everything that uh, Bill wrote about, which is dialogue. So. I'm coming around. My name is Lola. My name is Ben. My name is Luke. My name is Bill. Thank you, Senator Bill. Um, I also just want to say to you that these young students were so kind. They volunteered to do this. This was not part of their curriculum. They had never done a stage reading before. And I'm living in Albuquerque right now. So we actually did our rehearsal on Zoom and we did not meet until this morning. So I, I please give them another round. Of they did a fabulous job with brand new material. And um, I know that we're filming it and I'll thank the tech people in a moment, but this is your chance to ask the cast or the playwright a question about the material or what we're going to do with it, anything that you have, something that may have been struck through the hearing the material. Anybody have a question? Oh, Pishaw, you don't look that shy. I heard you laughing. I see a question. I hear a question. Yes, sir. The question was, were the speeches imaginary? Could uh, Senator Bill Playwright please elaborate on that? Thank you, Morgan, for the question. Yeah, this is all imaginary. What would happen if we switched votes? And, and it did come from a real life vote for me. That was a very real bill, the Save the Bees bill. And, and you know, it's just something that I've been living. I'm kind of uniquely situated to write this story. I grew up in a Republican family. I'm a Democrat, proud Democrat. But I mean, there was a time when we could communicate, but, you know, across the aisle. I grew up in, in that environment in my family. So, yeah, those are all imaginary votes. It's all imaginary. They're not real. But um, but it but it stems from a very real experience that I had. And it was kind of the trigger into the creative process. Yes, ma'am. Yes, this is for the senator. Um, I'm just wondering, was there any uh, change in the climate in the chamber after you had the play initially? So you first had the play? It's a great question. And forgive me for repeating questions. I know you can hear it, but it's for the sake of the film. So the question was, was there any change in the climate in the Senate, in the or in the Roundhouse, after perhaps writing this or presenting this. Well, thanks, Meredith. Uh, to be determined. I mean, this is all new. We haven't had a session since this play has been performed, honestly. But I know a lot of people have come both from both sides of the aisle are very aware of this play. So my hope is that that it will, and, and you know, engender some 
communication and some bipartisan muscle. So, I mean, but that's the hope. But, you know, these issues are real and uh, these divisions are real. But I think if nothing else, we can try to respect each other and be civil. And I think we are to a certain degree more so than in, than in a national way, because we are a citizens legislature. But still, it, it is, it's just really troubling to me, to say the least. And, you know, just to, to have this play, I mean, it is, I feel like we're in the middle of, especially now, the election time, you know, the tribal drums are beating. So it, it is, it is a hard, it's a hard task, but it's the right direction. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the question is, and it's directed to the senator, has there been an opportunity for the D's and the R's, that's a, that's a good one, uh, the blues and the reds, to prioritize any of the bills rather than present all of them? Well, I'm looking at my house colleague, Tara, over there. You know, the Senate historically has, that's kind of what we do back in the day um, in, a, in a big way, the communication between the two parties. Right now, I'm not sure where that is. We, you know, we're trying to, to do that, um, but it's, it's an ongoing to be determined there as well. Uh, you know, it's, this last session was a short session, as you know. So this long session, this will be interesting how that works out. But that's an excellent question. And I, I just want to say, you know, you, you did great. I mean, I can't tell you, it's, it's such a revelation to me as a writer, you know, to have you perform like that. I learned so much from your performance. So thank you. It was wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Who's the mush? Um, da, 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 da. Yes, Raquel, I see you. <laughs> I have a question, question from the Zoom. Oh, wonderful. Hello. Hello, Zoom. Thank you for, for, for joining in. Thank you. How did it feel to be the character you played voting against his traditional position? So the question from the Zoom audience was to the actors, how did you feel playing those characters uh, voting against the original positions that your characters had? So we start and with, okay, this is Luke. Okay, so I overall disagree with most of my, with most of the actual opinions of the character. However, it was really, interesting to me because I got to perform this perspective that I don't normally think about. And it kind of opened, as um, is the goal of the play, it opened a new perspective and it made it so that there was communication between both um, the side of me that agrees with certain issues and disagrees with certain issues and opinions and made it just a very different and actually quite interesting experience for me. Um, I personally more so agree with my character's views. So when voting against or pretend voting against these issues, it just feels wrong to say things that are, are written in the script. It's, yeah, I don't know. I agree with the same statements that the character makes after the votes. Thank you. Thank you, Zoom. That was a great question yeah. because that, again, is a perfect example of this play engendering dialogue and perspective and contemplation. And I believe that's part of, uh, if I'm not jumping here, part of what the playwright has tried. And as, as many of us know, if, as a supporter of theater, theater is a way for certainly entertainment, but it is a real source of education and inspiration to get dialogue happening and or to get you to... If you walk out of here and you start thinking something and maybe you read the paper differently or you ask a different question or perhaps you contact your representative, uh, then that's what this is about to do that. So I love that Zoom question. Any other questions? Did it? Yes, ma'am. Um, representative Tara Lujan here in San And my question is for the students. And by the way, that was just really excellent, excellent job on your part. I've seen the, this play done before. But as a civic 
practice or action. And, and maybe um, if there were more students here, I'd be asking them, or maybe they could be asked later. What, and your, what is your perspective, I guess, in the polarization um, of, of our parties, of our party systems? And has this opened up your mind? Uh, are you going to be a more critically minded when you read or understand politics? So, Senator, you were uh, our senator from Santa Fe. Are you? You were asking that of the students. Oh, did I say that wrong? Yeah. Sorry. Represent. I'm asking the students. You see, I, all right, we're asking the students about that thing. You should do this one because they'll think I'm new about acting. Other students, how do you see this being beneficial to other students? And this question is being posed by our representative from Santa Fe. I'm going to start with Ben this time. Okay. Um. Well. Could you repeat the question real quick? The meaning of this play, how can you become better critically minded when you're when you're engaged in political conversation, information? I definitely think so. I mean, we grew up in a time, we don't know the time where people were talking across the aisle. I grew up learning about how, like when I started learning about politics, people were fighting across the aisle, bombing places. Like it wasn't a great time. So I don't really have the kind of context. So it's interesting to think about a different kind of way of accepting the other side yeah um for me this play kind of opened my eyes a little bit more because of course i knew like data or facts or opinions of both sides but seeing a certain side from their perspective as opposed to through the lens of the opposing side kind of made me have a deeper understanding and it's um especially pragmatic because i registered to vote recently so i'll definitely keep my wide open with that. I think for me, this has really opened my eyes quite a bit um, as I don't entirely agree with the perspectives of my character. And it was just quite interesting to me to hear the arguments presented in a more civil way because it was supposed to be in a much more conversational way than in a Senate chamber or a representative chamber where it feels like as Ben was saying, I've grown up my whole life with just fighting between Democrats and Republicans, and there's never been any kind of truce, it feels like. I feel like this play really for both students and for adults it is a way for both perspectives to be shared in a more unifying experience and to show we really just, we don't want to keep fighting. Got me on that one. My question. Yes, I read. Okay, I have a question. Actually, students, thank you. Inspired by those three responses and directed to you, but also directed Senator O'Neill to you. I would like to hear more about the vision for the future of this play. I saw it in January. Work to see it again now. What? How do you see the future, Senator and students? So Irene is asking. Besides thanking. Okay. The students, you oh, that would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's why I'm repeating the question into the microphone. Uh, Irene has asked uh, first by beginning to say thank you to the students and even that inspiring question to get that dialogue going to understand, to hear that. And now she is asking the Senator, what is your vision and plans for the future with this play? Well, I'll continue to rework it. I've just learned so much just from your performance, just this audience was great. I wish we could just capture you. And you know, you were so responsive, and I really appreciate that. But basically, I'm getting a lot of interest. We are getting a lot of interest from outside of New Mexico. I have, let's see, I have the United States uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce interested in doing this in uh, in DC at their annual convention. We just did a convention up in uh, 